every single day. Um, and I was just a big, you know, ADD kid. And then I discovered um, uh, musical theater. I And then everything changed. I zeroed in. I became a, like literally a straight A student. Uh, so that kind of saved my life. But I went to see a production of Annie uh, when I was in seventh grade. And I remember leaving that theater being like, I want to do that. I want to be an orphan in a red wig and sing my heart out on a bed <laughs> with a mop. No, I, but I did know that I, I wanted to do this thing um, ever since that, that moment. So I joined the drama club after that. I started uh, doing some of my first roles in high school. And then I discovered uh, that I could get paid to be the center of attention and sing and act and dance. So I was like, why not? Um, so then I applied to schools, went to college, um, graduated, did a showcase in New York, and and that's Can't wait for a lot of people. So many people. A town in Arkansas, a town of about 4,000 people. It's basically a rice field and a, and, and a football field. That's about it. And I grew up playing football, uh, and I that's what I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a football player. And I fell in love with the production of Les Mis, and I was like, oh, that guy's a big hairy guy and he's singing really high i think i could do this uh, uh and so that was the beginning of my uh desire and impetus to to study musical theater and i went on to study uh mostly acting um but musical theater we didn't really have that degree at the school i went to but it was acting and musical theater um, and then I moved to New York right after college, and we didn't have a showcase, sadly, but I moved to New York right after college, basically, uh, and just started doing the thing. Clearly, you didn't need it. <laughs> right, right place, right time. Right, right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Anna? Hi, so my question is for Josh. What was your audition process like for I Come From Away? Uh, it was rigorous. Um, I, as you know, have you seen the show, Anna? You've seen Come From Away? Yeah, I so it's, it on it's 12 people on stage. Oh, okay. Everybody is wearing different hats, right? Um, uh, yeah, that's right. I met you, guys, right? Um, and uh, 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 everyone has to have that kind of what they call a swing brain, be able to compartmentalize and um, know what goes here, what goes there. It's all, we're all cogs in this big, well-oiled machine that is come from a way that our director, Christopher Ashley and, and choreographer Kelly Devine kind of expertly um, uh, uh, crafted. But uh, my audition was, like I said, a lot. I had to come in with like a crap ton of, of accents and um, uh, had a dance call. I think literally structurally how it went is I, I went in, I had like five scenes prepared because right, they wanted to see if I could play all these different people in different, in different accents. Um, I then went to, had a call back that same day, a dance call back. And then I found out like maybe a few days later. Now, a lot of my other auditions for shows were like, you know, call back after call back day after day, maybe even weeks, you know, week long process, but this was very quick um, and, and extensive, but but quick. So it was fun. It was challenging. Hope that answers. Awesome. Uh, 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 Liz? Hi. Okay, um, so the question I DM'd you, or sent you, Eli, is a def different one than I'm about to ask. Um, because you're swinging for multiple characters, how do you really establish each character's individuality when you're performing? Is this for me? Which one? Either <laughs> one. Either of you, sorry. I forgot to... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's totally I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Okay, well, so for me, um, you know, some quick tips that you can use to distinguish people is, is to really just look at each other, each person's point of view uh, and what, you know, what their part of that story is. Uh, and then from there, you can kind of dissect some pretty uh, 
what's the word um, surface level uh, I- identifiable things, especially if you're playing multiple people. Um, you know, like yeah. one person wears his hat to the side and one person wears glasses. One person doesn't wear glasses. One person has a little bit of a limp and other person doesn't. Little things like that. Um, some pretty surfacey things can help to start uh, internally distinguishing the difference between each of these people for you. Uh, but the first beginning point is to really look at their point of view, uh, what their part of the story is, what they are adding to it, what they're taking from it. And I'll piggyback on that by saying that um, uh, I agree uh, with you, Jake, the, the physicalization is a big thing to really ground your individual in how they carry themselves. And a lot of that has to do with their background, where they're from, their class, a slew of, you know, acting technique stuff that I'm sure, uh, you know, Jacob would echo. Um, but uh, also with Come From Away specifically, the accents were very grounding and helped to differentiate each person for me. Um, anywhere from a Newfoundland accent to a New York to a, a Canadian, a, a middle uh, area Canadian accent, all, all across the globe. So that was helpful for me, specifically with Come From Away. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we have two minutes in this room. Uh, ben, you're next. Hi, um, my question is for uh, Jacob, and I was just wondering, uh, what's your favorite Ooh, show you've been in? My favorite show I've been in in a while. That's such a difficult question to ask. Um, they have all been wonderful for so many different reasons. Um, so I'm going to name two. My favorite one is the, is Violet that I did. That was my Broadway debut. It's how I got my uh, membership into the union. It was just kind of a wild experience. Uh, and it was such a beautiful cast of people that coming straight out of basically, you know, like a, a, a little under a year, uh, having lived in the city, uh, it taught me so much about how everything works. Um, and then my second favorite, I just got the thing. Uh, my second favorite is uh, uh, Carousel because I made my principal debut in Carousel. So both for so many learning experiences, those were both wonderful. Awesome. Well, we have 45 seconds, but thank you for uh, being here. Um, yeah, uh, anyone who didn't get to ask their question will get um, a chance in future rooms. Uh, and it was so fun being with you guys. I will meet you all back in the main room in just a second. Awesome. <laughs> I, my, my... I'm sorry, Eli? Sorry, I was muted. But I said hello. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Was that? It said 20 minutes up top, but yeah, I was confused. <laughs> but it's okay. Um. Yeah. So that was the first round of breakout rooms, right? Eli? Yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay. Um. Yeah. We are ready to uh go. Do we want to take a picture? Um, oh first. yeah, let's do it because. Oh uh, yeah, because Olivia. <laughs> All right, uh, you guys, this will be posted on our Instagram. So if you don't want to be in it, you guys can turn your cameras. Um, Funny. Um, okay, hang on. Uh, okay, great, awesome. So we are now here with Olivia and Megan. Um, okay, let me pin you guys. Um, so let's start off with who is next? Um, Finn, you said your question right? I think it's Sedona who's next. Okay, I don't want to type it out because it's... And bad at typing. So, um, my question was basically: uh, if you had an education in theater, where did you go, and uh, how did you get in? Um, so I went to Indiana University. I uh, got my BFA in that program. Um, and most programs you have to audition for to get in. So I went through an audition process. Um, to get in, it started with a pre-screening recording, and then I had to do. Um, um, I believe a monologue, two songs, and then I also had a dance portion while I was there. Um, but I applied to uh, probably like five, five or six different programs, and I ended up in Indiana. 
Great question. And I um, went to Point Park University for one year and I dropped out and moved back to Chicago and started working professionally and then went to New York and then started booking work there. Um, but yeah, uh, it was a similar process. We, I, yeah, I believe it was like you do one monologue and like sing two songs and, you know, it was, and then, and like do a dance class. That school is really good for um, dancers and that's my main thing. So yeah, I wanted to choose a school that's like, you know, dance heavy, but then also, you know, be able to educate me in, in musical theater. So yeah, school is not the end all be all. I only went for one year and I dropped out, but you know, it is amazing. It's great to get the education, but you don't have to have it to um, do musical theater. So I don't have a degree. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Elaine? Hi, first of all, you guys are really great. I'm trying really hard not to fangirl right now, but <laughs> really you can. Sorry. Um, so for both of you, um, either of you guys can answer. How do you, I feel like everyone kind of when they take on a character, especially one that's like already established. Olivia, by the way, you're one of my favorite Karens of all time. How do you kind of like put your own personal twist on it? Because I feel like everyone makes it their own and makes it their own kind of version of that character. So how was that like for you? And how did you kind of find your niche for each one? Yes, good question. So I you know for me it was just kind of this hard process of learning like of, of learning my track and then having to also learn these three other roles so for me it was just like i need to get these lines down i'm sorry i need to get these lines down i need to have the, the song this all the songs memorized so it was really just like i needed to get that groundwork done first and then with the the people that play the the roles on tour i mean all of them are amazing you know um uh, just kind of learned from them and I did watch a lot of the things that they did tried to keep it as you know how they had done the role or like how they uh with like their perspective on it because there was there wasn't really much time for me to put my own twist if that makes sense to it um so really I you know and that that really is your job as like an understudy swing you have to go on and yes you can make it your own and I you know because I am my own person but like you have to go on and really just um like do the role and like do the job because they need you to say your line so that the next thing can happen so, the, so that the show goes forward you know so um but you know it, it's a crazy thing but yeah really really fun and I'm glad that you like it and I'm glad that you saw my Karen <laughs> I love playing her And to speak on that too, um, basically what Olivia said, I covered the ensemble tracks. So um, I honestly, there wasn't a lot to make my own. Um, Hamilton's very set. Everything that you're given um, is very specific for a reason because um, everything has a bigger meaning within the story. So like if I were to move my finger like this, instead of like move my whole hand, like that means something just based on the choreography. So there wasn't a lot of space for me to make a character of my own. But when there was, it was it was kind of fun to play with. But um, as, like Olivia said, as an understudy or a swing, your job is to do the show that's already been written. It's not necessarily to create your own character, which presents its own challenges within itself. Um, so yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Like there are times that you get to like play with it and do what you want, but a lot of the time it's pretty set in what you're meant to do as a swing and an understudy at least. Thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, let me see, uh, Leah. Um, do you want me to say it out loud? Like the last question. Like. Okay. Yeah. Um, my question for both of you is basically. How do you manage to do I chose a week? I mean, it must be really exhausting, like physically and mentally and emotionally. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Eight shows a week is hard. But, um, and Liv can probably speak a little bit more on this because she was in the show um, every night too. But as a swing, I wasn't in the show every single night. I only went on when someone was sick or hurt or whatever for whatever reason they were out um which also is its own like set of challenges because um I had to jump in and out of the show so like there were a lot of times that I was like swung on mid-show 
and like wasn't warmed up, wasn't like ready. And I just had to like go and do a track that I hadn't done in like weeks or months at a time. So that's really difficult within itself. Um, but being in eight shows a week, it's stamina is huge. Um, just staying physically healthy and trying to take care of yourself the best you can, really trying to um, sleep as much as you can. Um, lots of water, water, super important. These are like all basic things that like, obviously we all know, but like when you're doing, when you're actually doing it, you like kind of forget that like you need to really take care of yourself because your body is your instrument. So like you really have to stay on top of like what you're eating, how much you're sleeping, drinking water, all that, all that good stuff. But, um, yeah, I'll let Liv talk cause she was in, she was in eight shows. So that's, it's a lot. <laughs> no, but yeah, but even for a swing I feel like too it's so mentally draining like you have to be prepared to go on at any moment like a lot of like that takes up all your mental capacity you know you have to be ready to go on <laughs> but yeah it, it, for me it was just like I had to sleep a lot during the day so that I could be prepared to, to do the show at night and then if I needed to be thrown on for a lead like I was ready to do so but yeah it was just a lot of sleeping for me and then like a lot of coffee before the show but um, it's crazy how hard, it really is harder than you think. Like going into this, this since this is my first job, I, I was like, this is gonna be so much fun. And you know, like it's not, I didn't think it was gonna be so tiring, but it really raining. Like by the eighth show, or like, like trying so hard to find that last bit of energy in you. But um, yeah, with all that said, it's, you know, it's just gotta have your coffees <laughs> and drink water, I guess. <laughs> That's what I did. Awesome. Uh, we have, okay, five minutes. Uh, Finn? Or, sorry, uh, has there anybody in this breakout room not asked a question yet? I believe Chloe. Uh, Maddie, you go ahead. And then Chloe. Hi, what was your favorite memory from Hamilton, Chicago? I've seen the show twice, by the way. Amazing! Uh um, oh, that's a really challenging question because there's so many really great moments. Um, but I love, I love telling the story um, from the show. I so I was learning um, my last, or I think it was like my second to last track, "Woman One," and um, someone. This is this is like a testament to what swings do. This is a great story about that. So I'm learning "Woman One" and. Um, I hadn't finished learning her yet. I was asked to go on that night for the bullet for woman three. So I was on for woman three. And during, I think it was in the beginning of the second act during what, what did I miss? Um, someone got hurt. And then um, all of our swings were already on and there was no one to cover her track. And it was woman one had gotten hurt. So she had to go off, um, but we had no one to cover the part. And so uh, I was asked to do a split track with woman one but I hadn't learned all of it yet. And so our dance uh, associate who teaches us the show, he came up onto the deck and was like backstage with us. And he taught me woman one as the show was happening. So I would do part of the show, run off and he would be like, okay, you see that piece of paper, go on stage, move that piece of paper, take it over to the desk, put it there. And I was like, okay, so I'd go do it, do it, come off stage. He'd be like, okay, go be woman three. I was like, okay. So I'd run on, do woman three. And he'd be like, okay, now it was woman one. You're gonna, and so I learned woman one that like the end of woman one, all of act two of her, while the show was happening, like there was an audience, like everything, like while the show was happening. And that's just like, it's one of my favorite moments because it, it like proved to myself that I was like capable of way more than I thought I was. Cause that was incredibly stressful and scary because I had no idea what was going on, but I like had to do it. There was no choice but to do it. Um, and it, it like brought our cast really close together too. Cause everyone was just like, it was the, we were all like acting as a team, trying to help each other through everything and make sure that the show went on as it was supposed to. So it was just, it was a really cool moment of seeing everyone on stage work together under a really high stress situation and seeing it go well. Um, so the, and a little behind the scenes moment of like what actually happens as a swing, because that happens. So, yeah. Perfect, and we have Two minutes. Uh, so, a question for Olivia would be: What's who's your favorite plastic to play? 
I definitely loved doing Karen because she reminds me of me. Um, and I just had such a fun time making the audience laugh. Like I thought it was amazing that everybody was laughing at my lines and I was just like, work, I love this. I also loved, of course, playing Regina, even though it was the most stressful thing that I've ever done in my life. Uh, I really just love being that bitch on the stage, you know, just, so thank you for that question. <laughs> uh, we're all burn or someone gets hurt. Just last rapid fire thing. Chorus world burn. Right, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Well, it was so uh, fun hanging with you guys. Um, uh, and we will see you guys back in the main session. Thank you. This one's over. So sad. Feel um, free to, if you're not done with a question, uh, keep an eye on the timer, but there's really no rush. <laughs> So yeah, we have 30 seconds left. Anyway, how is everybody's second breakout room? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Awesome, thumbs up. Great, I'm seeing a lot of those. Eli, are we ready to go on to breakout room three? Not quite yet. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, and I I'm, think yeah. we have to leave as well. Oh, okay. So if you were in my group, uh, you won't get to meet Olivia. Oh, wait, sad. no, she's still here. Um, huh? She's still here. I don't know if she's... she's still I think here. I've, I've been a dancer all my life, especially for ballet. But for example, I never done tap. And I really want to be a professional musical theater performer. So... Okay. Yeah, so I was a ballerina. That was my thing. And I just did ballet and jazz. And um, mostly... Like, and the jazz was like mostly ballet-based jazz with like just turning your feet in and making them parallel like that was literally what it was and um I saw Billy Elliot and that was like my thing and I realized that's what I want to do with my life I didn't realize that you could do ballet and sing at the same time and it was mind-blowing to me and um that's when I went to I found a manager in the playbill and I auditioned um she signed me and then my first audition was for Billy Elliot and Billy Elliot is not just a ballet show, it's a, an extreme tap show. And I went into that audition and I had no idea what I was doing. And I had an anxiety attack in the room and I was 10 and I was petrified. And from that day forward, I said, I'm gonna learn every style I possibly can because that's how I'm going to be successful. So I do advise you to get training in multiple styles of dance. And now for someone who, obsessed with ballet i'm a tapper first and i teach tap daily i teach tap every week and i love it it's my favorite thing in the world so now we have three minutes so many things. thank you you're welcome uh we have three minutes left did anyone not get to i haven't been keeping track of this q a um anyone who hasn't gotten to ask a second question you can go elaine um, hi, sorry, it's really cool being able to talk to you. Um, this is just more of a general question. Do you just have any advice for high school, I guess, or just in life in general? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I was, I went, I was so small in high school and I, I mean, I was four foot six when I was a freshman and I was in Matilda and I was, I looked about 11 and I was 14. It was, um, I guess, my biggest advice for you is to always be yourself and to never doubt yourself. And I know that it's easier said than done, but um, I would be upset to share who I was in high school because I was afraid that people would make fun of me because I looked younger. People used to ask if I skipped grades. Um, I was afraid to say that I was in a Broadway show because... I was afraid that people were going to look at me differently and would be friends with me just for that. And guess what? There were people who were friends with me just for that. But you learn and you learn from those mistakes. And um, it's really important to stay yourself and to always be the most authentic you. Thank you so much. Perfect. Well, we are on the last minute. Um, quick question for me. Um, do you have a preference between Broadway and tour? Um, and like, what are, what are some of your favorite and least favorite moments from each? Uh, Broadway for sure. I loved touring. I never thought I would like it as much as I did, but, uh, tour was great because I got to see, I got to be in Florida in February and I got to experience what it was like to be on the road 
not my favorite thing, but I also loved it. I loved seeing different things. I loved seeing places. I loved spending time in Florida in, when it was cold up here. And it was really, really fun. But Broadway is just, it's something, it's a magical place. It really, really is. Everything that everyone says it is, it's just magical. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it was so fun talking with you. Thank you for being here. And we will wrap it up in the main room. How was the, how was breakout room three? Thumbs up, thumbs down.